Welcome to the course, Basics Digital Storytelling. Okay, so this is Rhino. When you open it, this is how it opens. And it also asks you at the beginning the template and you can just use millimeters. Uh, yeah, maybe millimeters is the most uh, convenient. And um, again, I will not go into sort of navigation too much because I really think you should just watch the, the basic the videos that kind of introduce Rhino in general. And they explain a little bit uh, the navigation around the windows. So I'll just use it and then uh, if you have more questions you can always ask me on, on monday okay so let's try to do, draw that arch so um first we are only drawing in the xy plane so i go here on the top i double click double click and then now i'm just in the, in the top view and to be honest i actually don't really like this grid so i will just adjust a little bit things so um if you go here there are these tabs just want to go here there are these tabs and you go to standard and there is a um, small cog options. By the way, there's also a console and sometimes you can just, or it's faster if you just write in a command here. Or so, for example, I could just write in op options, options. And uh, so you, you can always just type commands and then if you press enter or spacebar, you, you go in. Um, or yeah, you can click again on the cog here. Okay, so here this is there's quite a lot of options, but I'm just gonna go here to grid. I'm gonna remove these grid lines because they're always actually annoy me. If you want to change the background color, you can go to appearance, colors, and then here you can change it. I usually have it to white, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I put it to light gray because it's just easier, I think, to see things. Okay, with right click, you can right click, drag, you can just move around. Mouse wheel is zoom in, in and out, and this is just uh, left just selection okay so let's let's dive straight into it let's draw uh let's draw a floor plan so the top view of our stone arch which is a rectangle okay so there is a left here rectangle if i click here small arrow i can draw a rectangle in different ways but i can just kind of click it here and click anywhere and then i can just either click or i can type in the width or see in the uh, command line it says Okay, other corner or length. So I can just write in, for example, 100, press enter and write 100 again. Now I'm getting, this is now 100 by 100. Or so here on the bottom, if you put in this gumball, uh, you can just kind of then move it around. Otherwise you don't see it. So you can quickly move things around. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, and then this should be 100 by 100. Or so I can, for example, check that I can say distance. And so again, I'm using these, these commands because they're just easier for me, but they're always somewhere on the left here as well. But I'll just, I always tell you what I type for. So distance, space bar, and then, okay, this is 100 and this is 100. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, so that's the first part. Now, let's say I, my arch is actually kind of a cube or so I just want to copy this down. So I can just use a command called copy. But again, copy should be somewhere here on the left. But uh, I suggest you learn these few commands because it's just easier. Okay, so copy. You don't even have to finish it, but then you press space, space bar and you copy from point here to point here. Okay, uh, great. Now I have two of these and uh, let's actually use the... Uh, okay, so I will, I will draw the, the opening here. I can do this different ways. Um, I want to create this kind of arch. So maybe I want to draw a circle. So there's a circle here, or I can just write circle, space bar. And I don't really know where the circle, where this half circle needs to be, but I can kind of go step by step. Or so first, maybe I draw it here. Um, you, you can turn on the snap points. There's like a midpoint here or the end point, or there's sometimes even center, put the center here. I can snap onto the center of this, um, center of the um, um, uh, rectangle uh, so i can kind of just click it and now i'm in the center also these you can turn on and off here um, and there's object snap here um, you can turn it on com completely okay so here uh, i can just maybe go all the way to the end so this is now my circle now this is a bit too much so i can just select it center here and maybe i want to scale it so it's 50 percent or so i can say scale space bar and I'm grabbing again the center. So that's the center of um, 
uh, that's going to be my center of scaling. Uh, and then I can put in a scaling factor, which is in percentage. So it's like 0 0.5, which is half. Or So this is now half. This should be the half of the, of the whole thing. Actually, I just realized, let me just change maybe the color. Uh, let's go with just gray. So I think it's going to be a bit easier to see things. It's ugly, but it's easier to see. OK, now we have this guy. And uh, I can just draw a line. So I get a line, or there's a line here somewhere. Uh, it's easier to just type. So I have to find the points. So there's a midpoint here that snaps and center. I can turn it off, but I want to go perpendicular down. So it goes perpendicular and go again from this midpoint here, perpendicular down. And this now looks a little bit like an arch. Good enough. I actually wonder if this distance is like this. Yeah, this is, should be 25 and this should also be 25. Okay, so I have this as a base and I want to now just trim, trim this shape so that um, just looks like an arch. Or so I have this now. It's kind of the drawing is there, but everything is um, wrong. Or okay, from where can I turn the snap points on? Uh, here, so object snap on the very bottom. If you press it, they turn on here. And if you have this toolbar, hopefully. But uh, yeah, otherwise you can have a look a bit on the Monday. And then here you can kind of put them on and off. Okay, so I want to trim this one. So I can write in trim, trim, or you can use again, there's a command here, this is trim. And trim meaning is you select the boundary objects, for example, these two, press spacebar or enter, and then you can trim things. So you select now these ones, they disappear, okay? So I have, if I select this way, I, um, I just select these elements here, and these are actually separate curves, or which is a bit annoying, so it says here, four curves, uh, but I can join them or I, I want them to be just one thing because it's maybe easier to manage. So I can just select them and I could just say join. Um, I could join, now this is just one big curve. Uh, and this is already good, good for me. And now let's continue. So let's, according to, if you remember, there was the, the procedure was to take the floor plan and to rotate it or because you want to see the side. So I take this floor plan, I say rotate, and center point is here. This is a first reference point. And now I can just put an angle and maybe put 30 degrees or actually negative 30 in this direction. Is that good? And enter. This is now exactly 30 degrees. Let's see what's in the chat. Okay, yeah, let's have a look at these questions maybe at the very end. But yeah, in the Mac, the things are a little bit different. Although all the commands are kind of the same. Okay, so let me just go again. I select this guy. I say rotate uh, here, center point here, and then I write minus 30 uh, goes in this direction because maybe I want to have a precise angle, but otherwise I can just click where I want. Now, I, if you remember in the, in the cheat sheet, it was I have copied this one here. So I would say mirror. Um, so it's, I would type in mirror. So mirroring, this is the mirror plane. Okay, now I have two. And now, um, I can either draw helping lines, so I can get just a line here. If I hold shift, I can actually snap um, in right angles. Or if I don't hold shift, I get this. If I hold shift, I, I'm snapping in right angles. Or, so here I can just hold shift down, just click here. Again, if I press, if I press space bar, I'm just repeating the last command. Or, so I can just write in line, or I can just press space bar just repeats the last command. So it can be also very useful when you draw. You don't need to type all the time, but for example, I can just draw a line, space bar, space bar, space bar, and so on. So it just makes it a bit faster, or actually a, a lot faster. Okay, um, then these are helping lines and I can um, have to squeeze these, or if you remember. So there is a um, function called scale 1D, there's 2D as well, scale 1D base point here, um, reference point here, and then I can kind of squeeze or stretch it. And I basically go to this line here, or actually I can do it without this line. Or so I can just select object, say scale 1D. I have to be careful. There's also a normal that scale without, there's a scale which does something different. But scale 1D kind of squeezes, first point, reference point, And then I can just go and, go to this point here, or so it's basically, I'm kind of grabbing this point here, 
and here I squeezed it. I can, of course, with normal delete, I can delete lines always. And now I can do shear. Or so I select this object. If I don't select object before, and I just say shear, then it will ask me to select the object. So, okay, which object do you want to shear? This one here. Uh, then you have to press enter again. And then, okay, origin point here. And then this kind of reference point. And then this shearing keeps these two sides kind of parallel. And that's why it was important for us to squeeze the object. But I can just go here and here, here it is. Or so another one, select this one here. I can just now press spacebar again to repeat the shear command. Grab this point here, up. Okay, and that's it. I kind of have a, I have a very basic. Uh, how can I make those red and green arrows to show in the middle when I choose the object? Uh, it's here. It's called gumball. If you see my mouse here on the bottom. Uh, so if I select an object and press gumball, well, if I have this gumball, it will always, it will uh, give me these kind of arrows. So it's kind of a helping, helping thing. So it's here. Okay, let me actually save this because I'm afraid I might lose it. Uh, so 210924 stone arch drawing. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, and now we just have to finish up and kind of finish up. Uh, so I can do, what can I do? I just realized that I didn't really keep the original <laughs> original drawing, so I can't really do one from the example, but we can just ex export this. Or so it's obvious that I need, I'm missing a line here, and this line goes in this direction. It's actually parallel to this line here. It's actually exactly this, this line here. So I have to basically draw this line on this side, and I can do this by just saying, for example, line. I can just draw this line here. Up. Now it's kind of overlaid. I don't see it, but if I click, I can now choose either the 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 whole arch or that line that I just drew. And now I can just move it. I can write in move and press spacebar, go from here to here, or I can kind of copy it or whatever. So, and I do the same thing here. So I can just align from here to here and click on it, grab it. And I can just say move or usually just M also works because it's the, yeah, the M also works. So I just press M here, move it here. Okay, now I have these two lines. And then I don't really need to copy the long one. I can just write in line, go here, press shift, and I can just kind of approximately go up and go here also shift from this line up. And then just to show you this quickly, or something like that. change line width on line. Up. Yeah, okay, I'll answer many of these questions then at the, maybe at the end or even better on that. Okay, so now I have these extra lines here. I can delete them by saying trim, select the cutting object, spacebar, cut it off. Again, trim, just repeat the command, cutting object, and then up, this one is gone. And now this is already basically what I need. Um, and just think a little bit. Uh, let's do quickly, let's do quickly another drawing. Let's do quickly another drawing where I might actually show you how to do uh, uh, how to do this gabled roof. So maybe I do again a rectangle, uh, hundred by hundred. Okay, then mm, you know I can well actually I can just delete it. Let me actually do something. Uh, so again, maybe actually hundred by 200, okay, and um, maybe I can just rotate it. So I can say rotate, click here, here, and then with the shift, I just go right click. Actually, I'm gonna again, rotate from here, here, it was like minus 30, so minus 30 degrees. Okay, so you have the same angles here. And let's let's try to do this kind of gabled, gabled roof as well. So you can kind of move it, you can write M, Maybe go to the center here, grab it in the center here, and then just kind of, well, I guess that's not the best place to, uh, it's just here somewhere. Um, so I can write, draw another line, um, click here. Now I can write 100, for example. And now I have a line that is fixed to 100 length. Or So if I press shift, it will just kind of snap down, click, and now it's here. 
Um, maybe that's actually a bit too high. Maybe I will do uh, another line and do like write in 50 spacebar. I have a 50 line, snap it down, and I just want to copy. So there's an uh, option called copy. Go from here, here, here. And now I, you can do whatever you want to kind of finish this. Uh, you can go here, polyline, just write polyline, not polyline, polyline. So it's just a sequence of lines here, here, here. Okay, it's a minor chat. Yeah, do we use minus 30 angle to make a mutual projection? No, uh, you can use actually any angle you want. Um, yeah, any, and this is, this is not fixed. So you can actually use whatever you want. Um, Okay, let's let's do like a kind of a mock-up house. Or so I just want to show you that. So if I have a line here, uh, go here from the middle, and go again at center, but maybe again this 50 up. Okay, here, and I just want to kind of I just going to quickly sort of do a bit more complex house. So I want to copy this line here, 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 midpoint here, and um with the line, I'm just gonna draw this um, ridges, okay? And this is going to be my triangle, or so I can go like this on this side and here on this side. Okay, so this is now already my, but um, I want to draw maybe a similar triangle here as well. So uh, this line is, this distance is 50, I think, yes. So I can do, for example, a better circle here write in a circle go from the middle here now i can just write 50 and now i have two points here as well uh, they obviously go here great and i'm just you'll see a little bit where i'm going kind of to intersection here from this point here from this point here and i can either draw or just move this one here okay so another line from this point here 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 okay so i did a little bit kind of uh, mock up, and I'll just copy paste this and I'll just move it, move it on the side because maybe I want to keep it later as a reference. And I'll just try to finish quickly this, uh, I'll finish quickly this roof so I can add extra lines here. Um, so here. And this is now also constructed in a proper way, or so uh, this is actually how, how these roofs would sort of look like, or and this one I can just explode. If I do explode, these lines are now separate. Now I can also kind of trim them easily. This line doesn't exist. This one doesn't exist. This one doesn't exist. This one here, uh, this one either, this one either. And here I have to trim it. I can say trim. These are cutting lines. Okay, and here as well, trimming up, up. And I'm not sure if I missed something, but that's basically kind of a ugly house. It's not really ugly, it's very, picturesque and uh, I'll show maybe a little bit more kind of how to finish up these roofs maybe next time uh, but uh, these are sort of let's say our two drawings I want to align them here like this and like this okay I want to just quickly show you how to do how to do hatching and how to basically print this actually I want to a4 so uh, I want to move it here okay let's do it like this I want to have a portrait, uh, so I want to have it here. This is this is this the center. It is. Um, okay, let, let's do a little bit of hatching. So I can use the hatch command to kind of full to fill up uh, the surfaces sort of quickly. Um, but the problem is that I need to I need to select sort of um, I need to select basically. Um, the geometry that I want to hatch or so here I can do it but here in between I cannot or so I need to kind of create these extra lines so I can do something called curve boolean um, I can select all of these hop and now I can kind of select here inside inside and now these are just added extra so they just this these are kind of just drawn extra uh, the cool thing about that I can do the same thing here um, curve, boolean, and I can just, well, I can kind of in theory take all the, all the sides, but let's just take, uh, uh, let's actually take 
here, here, and those ones, or actually, no, let's take this one, this one, and this one, and those ones will paint. Um, so I can now just say hatch and uh, select boundary curves. So it's this one, this one, and maybe uh, this roof is not really black, but oh no, let's, yeah, okay, it's black. Good. And here we just choose solid. Okay, so now this is black. And here, maybe on the side, we'll do this side, uh, we'll make it uh, kind of lines or so. I can just select this one, say hatch. And here I have to choose. So maybe I choose this one here, hatch one. Okay. And it's, uh, it's very, very dense. So we can go here under Rhino properties of the object. It's here, object. Actually, I have to select the hatch, hatch one. And then I have to change the scale, maybe. So maybe it's 10. Okay, so maybe a bit better, maybe something in between, maybe five. Okay, and um, I want to rotate it. So if you remember, we had 30 rotations, so maybe 30. Ah, somehow it's not, it's the opposite, 180 minus 30 is 150 maybe. Ah, no, the opposite of, ah, let's just try them out, 60. Okay, it's kind of 60 degrees here. It goes in this direction. Ah, maybe it's gold here, yeah, it's fine. Okay, and let's do the same thing here. So hatch uh, this side here, this side here, and this side here, uh, space bar. And now again, just hatch, okay. And um, I'll just select them. I think you can do some match. Uh -huh. So I can kind of write in these numbers again, but I can also say here match. And then I just select the hatch that I already have, and it will just make it, make it exactly uh, the same, okay? And uh, I just realized that our time is a bit running out, but let's let's keep these, um, I think this is enough. So let's try to just do a few more adjustments. So in the Rhino, there are layers, or so I can put objects in different layers, and these layers then determine, I can then control geometry sort of separate. You know? And, um, what we will do here, we will create, I'll just delete all the other layers here. Delete, delete, delete. There's like a default layer. And here I can just put in, if I go here on the right, there's print width. So I can choose basically how thick I want this to be. And um, again, a bit hard to know without trying out, but maybe uh, 18 is good, 0 0.18, okay. And, and then the layer one which would be my hatch. Maybe here I can just put it a gray color, but this doesn't really, oh no, actually this is gonna be, you can put actually here whatever color you want. So for example, I could put um, not red, but maybe magenta or something, okay? And here I will call it hatch. So double click hatch, and I will change the print width to hairline. Hairline is basically the, that is the minimum width, the minimum thickness that can be shown on printer. So you have a printer and if it, the printer has a command that to print something in hairline, then the print will, printer will sort of choose the, the smallest line that it can print. And uh, yeah, that's just the thing. Okay, so this is hairline. Um, go back here to default. And now I want to change, this one can, these ones can stay, but these ones, I, I want them to be thinner. Or so I want these lines to be thinner than the, the actual drawing. Or so I have to select these hatches. There's a way to quickly select all hatches by saying, for example, select hatch, but this then selects all of them. Or I like deselect this one and this one. Okay, and then I can change the layer. I can say change layer command, and I can just put it into hatch here. Okay, and now they are become pink, which is kind of ugly, but this doesn't matter. It's just important for me to understand in this drawing that ah, whatever is pink is actually super thin, or it will be printed very, very thin. Uh, and Okay, I'm almost done. And now we actually have to print it. Now there are different ways to do this. The best way and the one that you should also use uh, is to create a layout. Or so I can just go here under file, print, let's print, print. But this is not good because then I have to always choose the window. I have to create, it's better if I just create a layout, then this layout will always be the same. And I create a layout by either going here under drafting, left is like layout. Uh, actually here is new layout, or I can just type in layout, or I can go here in the bottom and there's like perspective top right, top front right. 
and there's like a plus or so I press a plus here and I can say new layout and now I have to name it so maybe I can say something like uh, I can just say like stone arch a4 or so stone arch a4 and then I have to choose the printer so Adobe is good but I had a problem with Adobe uh, so I'll just use here Rhino PDF so that's the vector document that we will um, use also to exchange later uh, size is a4 this is good portrait blah blah blah. okay and it kind of flips it or switches it here actually I don't know why it says now page one when I renamed it rename huh. okay stone arch a4 what happened there okay so now I have again my top and I have this layout here now you can see there's a sheet of paper here and it, everything is a little bit off but I can double click. I can double click inside, double click, and now I can actually navigate. With my mouse, I can sort of navigate. I can select these objects here and I can write in ZS. ZS is zoom selected. It's also here somewhere. Set view, this one here, I think, zoom selected. It will just kind of zoom it in so that it's nicely fit in this um, place here. But the issue is this is not. Well, this is now some scale or so here I can actually see the scale if I go here uh, because I'm this I double clicked in this inside can, becomes a bit darker you see it tells me here under these properties tells me the scale of the uh, layout in relation to the model and you can see it's kind of 2.06 so it's almost one to two but not exactly so I can just change it here that it's one to two so if we press enter everything will kind of just zoom in a little bit so now this scale is actually one to two, which is kind of nice because maybe if I print it out, often uh, you, there are these standard scales that you use like one to 50, one to 100, uh, one to 20. So it's good to work with some scale that when you print it on the paper, you can actually measure on the paper the distances. This is of course important if you're on a construction site and so on. If I double click out, now I'm here and I can even add some text. So on this layout, I can now add a text. Let's do quickly that, just writing text, spacebar, and what do I write? I can write, you know, stone arch in military projection. And I have to check a little bit these, so this Arial, ugly font, but so it is height. Okay, and I can just place it, for example, here. This is maybe a bit too big. So if I click here, I can just change the height to maybe two or two and a half, whatever. Uh, so with this, I can kind of, I can create, um, yeah, I, I can create like um, basically um, labels on my drawing. I just realized I have one minute, but I'll try to quickly finish. And uh, I can go still back to my top drawing here and I can continue drawing. And if I go to the layout, I can kind of, it's just a view of my drawing. Or so also this is now, this text is now in this drawing here. Okay. Uh, and now the final thing is to print. So I can go here when I'm on the layout, go file print now this i don't need to change the view anymore because i already set it up in the layout uh, i have to just check here vector output uh, output type is vector so i can also print it as an image so it's raster but actually we want the vector output and here i can choose well it can either be this print color i have this ugly magenta or i can say no it's actually black and white so everything is black and white it's just the thicknesses change view and output scale this is already set so layout um uh, this should be fine and i can just basically say print and then i can save it projection drawing stone art drawing save and it will just save it as a pdf file uh, i have to go back tutorials here and uh, this is the newest one and uh, it's on my different screen hopefully you can see it now that's it so that's the drawing um, again i could make it even nicer but this is now a vector drawing and this is you know if you're an architect or a designer and if you're sending plans to somebody this is how you do it if you do this this is like okay this person knows something so this is like just a standard thing that you would do uh, of course this is a very simple drawing but you're not sending an image or because now here i can just zoom into the drawing as much as i want and as i was talking before the detail stays the same or it's kind of the image goes bigger but actually the detail stays the same or I can never see the pixels here because this is a vector drawing or so that's actually very, very useful.
Okay, so I, I can never see the pixels here because there are no pixels. It's just um, the PDF or this uh, Acrobat, Adobe Acrobat. This PDF reader is is just displaying. It's li literally redrawing the lines of my of my drawing here. So. Um, and yeah, they are kind of quite thin. These ones are thinner, and you can see that when you get, once again, if you zoom in, uh, these hatch lines are actually thinner than the rest. So when you print it out, this will be this kind of very maybe thin line, and then you can print, you can just test, see kind of what looks what looks best. And then the, this guy is here. <clears throat> okay, so I apologize for going a bit over the time, but I would like to show you just for the very Final thing, I would like to show you how to load in. I'll just save this. You will get this file. I want to show you how to load, um, how to load um, Helsinki base base plan. Okay, that's that's kind of important. So somebody asked me about this copy pasting. <coughs> I want to show. You. So I go here to new um, millimeters. It's fine. Large objects, maybe millimeters. Okay. I go to top. And um, again, I can just sort of remove this grid, which always annoys me here. Okay, now I have to, have, there are a few steps I have to do. So first I have to find the map. The map is on my courses, but here I have it under, it's my, of course, local computer materials, city plans, health city base plan. Now I can just, I can just import this directly. Or so I can just drag and drop it into Rhino. Or you can go, uh, yeah, you can then choose you and open it, insert, import, uh, any of these work. But I can, for example, just say open file. There are some options, okay. And it just opens this DVG. You can also save it then in DVG later. So you can just work in this DVG format. Uh, or you can save it as writer format, whatever. Okay, here they are. Now let's find, let's find something cool. Uh, so actually, I think the block that was in the example is from somewhere here. I'll leave you in this area here. So it's kind of interesting for me. Let's find a block. Uh, here are layers on the right. So you can turn off certain things um, that are maybe uh, not so necessary. I'm just uh, buildings. OK, so I just turn on the building. So I just have the building. Maybe we take uh, this block in. OK. And I would just copy it. OK, so or maybe this one. Let's take this one here. And uh, let's say I want to copy it into some other drawing. So I copy it by pressing Control C or I just go edit, copy. And now it says here copy to clipboard. So it's kind of in the memory, but I don't want to draw in this file. I want to have another file. So I go file, new, open just the new one, save changes to healthcare base plan, no. A new one is kind of, well, whatever, large objects, millimeters, okay. Okay, I'm kind of back here. And now I have to paste it, but there's a small trick. Um, so I can paste it. So I can just go under edit, paste. But I think some of you already tried this. And the problem is the object is not here. You, you don't see it. And the reason is because the coordinates of this plan that we just opened, uh, the coordinates, the zero, the origin of that plan is who knows where it's somewhere in the in Finland, I guess, but it might be very far away. So my object is somewhere here, but it's just very, very far away. And I have to kind of now track it. So maybe you deselect and then you're now confused. You don't know how to find it. There are a few ways that you can find it. You can say, say for example, well, select all. Or so I'm selecting everything that is in the drawing. It says here, I oh, look 16 curves, but again, I don't see them. But then you can say again, the zoom select at ZS or it's here. Zoom selected. OK, so I appeared. And you can see here the coordinates here on the bottom are very, very large. Like, um, I don't know what this is, 386,000, OK? So it just this drawing is just very far away from the origin. I can select it, say move, and select some point maybe here. Then I just want to bring it back to the origin. So I can just type in 0, Enter. And now it's back. And I can go, go again now and zoom select here. And now it's in the origin. Okay, oh, wow. So now I kind of took my, you can see now the, the, uh, the numbers here are much smaller. Okay, so now I can start with, with this drawing. Now these are individual lines. They're actually polylines, I guess, uh, closed. And I can just work with them just as if they would be like a normal 
normal drawing. Or so basically, I can use this as my as my base now. And maybe next time I will show you how to uh, start with one of these city blocks. But I kind of already show you a little bit. Or so, you know, if you take this one here, I really apologize for getting a bit over time. But you know, I take this guy here. I can just kind of rotate it. I use thirty, but I mean, you would just use whatever works for your drawing. You know, so maybe like this. Now I have to uh, put in a I have, to, I have this, I want to draw maybe this building slayer, so they are all the same lines. So I'll say line, I would add some height here. And uh, then I can just kind of copy. This guy goes up, great. And I can do again, well, this line here, copy from here, 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 here. And now I want to trim, uh, trim, trim, wait a minute. Here, here, up, okay. and. In a very quick way, I kind of took the building, whatever this building was from here, and I kind of turned it already into a, some volume. And I can do this sort of with all of them separately or together. They have maybe different heights. So these lines are just, uh, you know, have different length. And then I can start, I can look into the map, maybe Google map or this Helsinki map and just see how the roof looks like, how the facades look like. And next time I'll show you how to do more on the facades. There are some tricks. But yeah, this is basically how you start 